We're excited to introduce the all-new Victory Church app, now available on the Apple App Store and the Android market for your smartphone and tablet. Get church information and download free content from Victory. Don't miss a service. Listen to past week's messages on the go, new after each service in the Camden and El Dorado campuses. Access Victory TV on demand and watch all the exciting video series taught by Pastor Jerry and the Victory Pastoral Team. Send a confidential prayer request and let the Victory Prayer Ministers believe God with you for your miracle. And take advantage of our most convenient way to give with a secure Victory Giving section where you can choose from many easy ways to give your tithes or sow into specific ministries of the church at your convenience right from the palm of your hand. It's all at your fingertips on the new Victory Church app. Download for free today. Simply go to the Apple App Store or the Android Marketplace right on your smartphone or tablet and search for the Victory Church Arkansas and click on the Victory logo. is so big and it is such a desire of God for us to develop love lives and for us to develop maturity everybody say maturity maturity and walking in love I tell you love will do things in your life that nothing else will do it will change things that nothing else will do joy celebration of joy in your life will bring about change where nothing else will do it Having peace in the storm stops the storm. It fills our life full of power. And, and it should, and because God will strengthen that, you can literally stand in the face of adversity, no matter who that adversity is, and you can remain a loving person because the strength of that love has power. God can put a gentleness and a strength in your life. There's, there's this, it's where you have the confidence. If you've got confidence of that strength of that love inside you that will never fail, everybody say never fail. The only thing that the Bible says will never fail is God and his love. But see, God's, God's love is going to carry you past the knowledge. It's going to carry you past your normal knowledge. But if you will allow God to do that, if we will allow God to do that, then we'll be filled with all the fullness of God. I cannot imagine what it would be to be filled with the fullness of God. Hello, I'm Pastor Jerry Abels at the Victory Church, and I want to say welcome. Thank you for being part of our TV family. You're a part of our audience. You're a part of our life and a, and a part of this ministry. We're in a series talking about God's power to change me. We're looking at God's power and His ability to do a work in me that can radically change me and then change my life. During this service, I want you to take advantage of the website at the bottom of the screen. Go on there and put your prayer request or let us know what's happening. Give us your testimony about the goodness of God in your life. Also, the prayer number at the bottom of the screen. Take advantage of that. We would love for you to call us and to let us know what's happening with you. Tell us something good that God's working in your life or something good that's happening. We would love to hear it. And also, our app. Go to the App Store, download the Victory Church app, and start viewing or listening to our services right there on your phone. Well, we're going into that service now, God's power to change me. What's the fullness of God? What is God full of? What is God full of? What is God, what, what is God full of that he's telling me that I can be full of? Everybody say God's full of healing. He's full of compassion. He's full of mercy. He's full of strength. He's full of power. He's full of healing. He's full of deliverance. He's full of help. He's full of money. I mean, God is full. I mean, God is full. And the Bible says that that it is, causes is in fullness of God will come in my life. All right, flesh moves like Bean shooters. That's what, that's what, God talks to me kind of funny. He said, flesh, 
Flesh moves are like bean shooters against issues of right. I mean, when, when we think we're strategizing and we've got how we're going to handle this, it's like a bean shooter. It's like a bean shooter in a battle. But, but implanting love is like shooting an AK-47. I mean, love has power to destroy whatever it is that's trying to destroy you. Now, let me tell you, I know some of you, some of you think that your answer is in rebellion. Uh, uh, nobody's going to do me like that anymore. Uh, I, well, I heard what they said about me. And, and you have a lot of confidence in that flesh. But I'm going to tell you what, that flesh is going to profit you nothing. In the end, it's going to do nothing in your life. But what will profit you is finding a way to mature yourself or to allow Holy Spirit to mature you in love. Letting God develop us into that next layer of love. Praise God. Amen. All right, now 1 John 3.16 says, we know the real love. I love what it says in 1 John. Uh, we love St. John 3.16, but 1 John 3.16 says, we know what real love is. That's what it says. There's this, this sincere drive. Now, it's real important, the Bible says, the kind of love. 1 John 3.16, it qualifies the kind of love. It says, we know what real love is, and it qualifies it because Jesus had that love, and it qualifies it by being a giving love. There are five major kinds of love, <clears throat> and, and we've got to know that out of the five major kinds of love, we, we have to, if we're going to mature in love, I've got to know what not to, what to not put dependency on. Uh, uh, there's several different kinds of love, but the five major that's drawn from the Greek language, and that's some way us Americans begin to live the Greek. And, uh, but the first one is called the mania. Uh, it's where we get the word maniac. Uh, it's, it's compulsion love. Uh, like I was, I was teaching chapel about that this week, and I said, I said, you know, there was a time I thought uh, a Cobra Jet 428 was everything I'd ever want in life. <laughs> but didn't take it. When that thing broke down a few times, I found out I don't love that car anymore. I mean, compulsory love, I mean, it, it'll pull you. It'll just pull your heart, but you got to know it's so fleeting. And some people live their whole life off that maniac kind of love. They're constantly moving from one thing to the other all their life, trying to keep a hype up inside them. That kind of love will always let you down. And as a believer, if we're going to mature in the right kind of love, what we have to do, we have to, we have to discipline that mania love. We have, to, we have to discipline that. So whatever it is that you just have a compulsion toward, that you just, wow, oh, just, wow. Oh. And then you always have to limit it. That, that's where that we have to use the fruit of the Spirit that's able to practice self-discipline. There's nothing you can't say no to. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the fruit of the Spirit. God's developing that in you, and He is the source of that power. There's nothing that you cannot say no to. There's nothing. Now the devil's telling you. I told I told the kids, man, there was a time I had this maniac desire for strawberry shortcake. Man, it was a maniac desire. Lena tell you, I mean, I would not. You didn't offer me a piece of strawberry shortcake. You offered me a cake. <laughs> but I tell you what, it didn't take much of that cake just covered with strawberries, just whipped cream all over it, to where the sickness that you felt all of a sudden began to do away with that desire. <laughs> So anything that's in that type of love in your life, you always have to manage it. It always has to be managed. It can take you. It, it, will, it will rob Jesus out of your life. I love fishing, so I'm, I'm going to go fishing on Sunday. I love, I love hunting, so get out of my way. I'm gonna... We all watch people do that. I love a car. I mean, I've, I've seen people get so caught up in their new cars. <laughs> I mean, you cannot allow yourself to develop love toward things that control you. You always have to discipline it. Now, God wants us to enjoy good things. God, I believe, it's, it's the will of the Father to give us good things. 
But it always has to be done in discipline. You have to allow, allow. You have to allow. You have to allow yourself. And of course, by keeping God first in your life, you have to allow that to be disciplined. And then uh, the second type of love is called storgy, and 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 storgy is family love. Now, now the wonderful thing about family love is is that it does last last a lifetime. And we're supposed to have such a love inside of us that really and truly that that we can love family no matter what. God built us that way. Then there's phileo love. And phileo love is, is, is a growing love, but it's also a fleeting love. It's the word Philadelphia. It's brethren. It's, it's people, when people grow together through the things that they love to do. And that, that love is, is a good love. But always know it's like a wave. Those loves will always come and go. And you've got to let people bring people into your life for particular seasons. And then you've got to let God remove. I, I mean, I have seen people get so frantic over friends. It should not be a controlling factor. That's not the p- most powerful love that you have. You've got to allow God to bring friends into your life and allow them to be what God intends them to be in your life. And then you've got to allow God to remove those friends at times. Now, there are some lifelong friends. No, those are the ones we really enjoy. They can be with you for your whole life. But that, that's really unusual. Most friends, it's just like a wave of the sea. It's just gradually come because you develop your interest, and the Lord has a way of doing that. And then, then as your life changes, there, there's changes, and you have to let them go. And so you never cry over the past. You always know God's got something good going on. It may be the season for this friendship to end. This may be the season for this love relationship to, to quieten some. It's okay. I can trust God. I can trust the Holy Spirit. I can trust God. If I'm not dependent on myself, if I'm dependent on God, then I can trust God to bring proper people in at the proper time in my life. And then I can trust God to remove those people. Let me, let me tell you what happened to us Sunday. We, I was here preaching on the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. Now, I'm going to let you in on a secret that we're not doing anymore. Uh, but after I, I went into a meeting and Lane came to me, we was in uh, Shreveport. I drove in Sunday morning. We was in Shreveport there with Stephen Harshaw's wedding. And such a wonderful wedding. And uh, so I drove in Sunday morning. Well, we, Lane had a billfold. And I won't tell you our savings was in that billfold. I'm honest with you. We had been saving and saving and saving and saving. And you're talking about crazy people. We are two of the craziest people you've ever met. But in that billfold, and I'm, it was, well, it was more than $1,000. And, and it, was, it was quite a bit of money that we had been saving through various gifts that God had given me through various things. And so, Elaine, when we went into the wedding, <clears throat> she said, I can't care. Now, Elaine never does this. She said, I can't carry this billfold into that wedding. There's a trash sack over here. I'll put this billfold in that trash sack because nobody will ever think about that. Well, sometimes Saturday or sometime Friday night, I decided to clean the car up. I mean, we was around a lot of different places. And I was just cleaning the car up in between the places. And so, so I, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, uh, so I, I didn't know about that. Anyway, so after that, Lane said, Lane said, Jerry, you know, all our money. <laughs> she said, it was in that sack. He threw away. So I said, honey, I threw away several sacks. I said, I was doing I was pulling papers together and things where I kept for a while. And I said, I, said, I have no idea really where I've, I've thrown it. I, it could have been this or that. 
And so, but we made a firm decision that money wasn't our God. And there we made a firm decision that joy was not going to be taken away from us and peace was not going to be robbed. And I tell you what, we had the greatest drive back to Shreveport. Melanie and I, we went back. We, we knew we, with diligence we should go and try to find. We had the great, I tell you, we played cards on Sunday. Yeah, we, we played cards, laughed, had the grandest time, just enjoyed because we just determined that money wasn't going to be our God. Things like that come and go. And I'll be honest with you. We asked God to recover the money. But I'm going to tell you what. If he hadn't have, he wouldn't have stolen the joy. Because I don't serve things. I serve the Lord. But Elaine heard the voice of the Lord, and the voice of the Lord told Elaine that, that it going to recover. I'm just saying how God brings people into your life. So I got down there, and I said, uh, so we, we went to the motel where we had stayed at that night before. And so I... Uh, <clears throat> First, you don't just walk up and ask people, you can go through the trash. So I, I knew we was going to have a little obstacle there probably. And so, and I wasn't sure it was there because I'd been to Dunkin' Donuts and, and I had, we'd eaten somewhere. And so I'd been all around, but so I, so I tried. So I, I went in and I looked down in the garbage container. They was gathering garbage that day. And so I looked down in the garbage container and there was a scythe I recognized. And I grabbed it. And it was garbage. And so, and so we, we said, well, see, we got a dilemma. So we went to the, to the people that, um, uh, the, the maids that were there. And, and we said, we're going to ask you an odd thing. Can we go through the trash? <laughs> and and said, I, this, I, we said, we've lost something precious. And can we just go through the trash? And, and I tell you what. You're talking about God bring people into your life. Those two little maids became the most precious servants of the Lord to us. They said, let us do it. We don't want you to do it. I said, no. I said that. They said, well, let's put gloves on you. I mean, the Lord just, is, the way God brings people into your life in the little ways just have such meaning, don't they? Well, there was one of these maids. <clears throat> we went through all the trash inside that hot inside that place. Now, I don't know how many big old black bags of stuff we went through. And then we went, uh, and, and the, uh, so the maid said, I got to go back to work. I said, okay. And so, but one of the maids said, I'm going to go and check out. I'm going to go and clock out because I feel this, that I am to help y'all. That's what she said. She said, I feel this, I am to help y'all. And so she went and clocked out and came back and helped us. And then about that time, she said, there's a reason I'm wanting to help you. She said, my son's 15 years old, was just killed. And he was just shot. And he says, there's just something in me to tell me to help you all. And she said, I have to keep my mind on things. And so I tell you, that, that little lady, you talking about a bosom buddy. She was a bosom buddy. We went outside to the big, they said, you can't get in there with big container. We went outside, and she said, I'm supposed to do this for you. We fought her all that. We said, I'm supposed to do it for you. I think the second bag she pulled out, she ripped it open, and there was Elaine's billfold. And, and we said, you know how God is just so good? But that wasn't it. I don't, we didn't care. Really, the things didn't matter. Then the little lady said, my life is so broken. She says, I need the Lord. She says, I can't hardly go home. My whole family is so disturbed over the loss of our son. Will you pray? And out there beside that garbage thing, that little lady came to Jesus and accepted and accept to the Lord and she says can you help me get a good church can you help me find a good church she said I just don't know of anything 
Say, sure, girl, we can help you. So I'm so thankful God brought that lady into my life that day. I'm, oh, I'm thankful to get the money back. Because they had all of Lane's credit cards, too. So it had all of our credit, too. So, But I'm thankful for that. But I'm more thankful that God brought a precious lady into our lives that probably for the next many years we will be sharing with her and she will be a part of our life. Can you say amen? So that's what we call phileo love, and, and that is you allow the Holy Spirit to bring people into your life, and God will send people into your life to be a blessing to you. And then you've got to give God the right for the Lord to take those people out of your life. But always know God will never leave you alone because even in between the times when God has doesn't have a friend there, he'll come, he'll stand right there beside you and rejoice. And he'll put his arm around you. And God will say, I'll be your friend. How many of you sense that God's dealing with you? You're, you're having a hard issue dealing with, uh, dealing with a love uh, issue right now. That you're having an issue. And you say, Jerry, I, I just really need the Holy Spirit to help me. I need the Holy Spirit to help me to trust God's love. I need the Holy Spirit to give me a strength in me. If that's you, I want you to just come on. Come on right here. I want, I want to pray. There's an anointing here. There is anointing here to help people. There's an anointing here to help people. There's, if, you're, if, if you're having an issue, having, and I'm, I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to pray that God make you a go-kart. I'm going to pray that God make you a military tank. Because God wants to do a work of strength in you. The Lord wants to make us. And so we're wise as a serpent in dealing with the devil. But we're harmless as a dove dealing with people. God wants to make us to where that we're militant and powerful against the enemy. And we're humble as a lamb. The power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we could, we need to never underestimate God's power to help us. God is a miraculous God. You have, may not can remember honestly seeing a miracle, but I want you to know God works miracles every day in our lives. And what we can do, we can cooperate with God. Because it's not just God in my life. It's just not me asking God, you just come in. And, and it's not just me. It's not me trying to make it on my own. It's the team. It's you and God working together to formulate the life of happiness and joy and victory that God has for you. I want us to pray today. I want us to take time and I want us to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives in an even greater way. You know, the Bible says that in the greatest weaknesses in our life, that the grace of God is able to come in and change that weakness into a glorious strength and power. I don't know where your life may be weak. I, I know mine. I know the weaknesses that I have to depend on the Holy Spirit on a daily basis for God to give me His miraculous strength. But I can also remember a time that I tried to do it on my own. And then possibly that's where you are. Maybe you're hitting those bumps, hitting those brick walls. You're trying to do it on your own and literally by yourself. Why not ask God to help you? Why not ask God to come along and come inside you and bring about the needed changes in our lives personally and in our situations that we face? God can handle both of those. And when you invite the Holy Spirit, He comes and He begins that marvelous work. Let's pray. But first, let's pray as we want to pray all the time and make sure everything's right with God. That is, that is step number one. I must make sure, that's in the Lord's Prayer that Jesus gave us. 
I must make sure things are right with God. So let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I confess my sins to you and ask you to forgive me. And I believe right now that you're doing that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's invite the Holy Spirit. Let's invite God's mighty power to come into our life and help us. Would you? Would you pray a prayer something like this? Would you say, Father, I ask your precious Holy Spirit to live in my life. Lord, there's ways that I'm acting, there's things that I'm doing that I know that is not right. I'm reacting to people that would come against me, or I'm reacting to people as they would say things that, that's in a manner that's unlike you. And I ask you, precious Holy Spirit, to empower me. Empower me to walk in love, even in situations that seem to be so contrary to me. And God, give me the peace in the midst of the storm. Lord, give me the peace that I can trust you, even in the midst of the situations I face. Help me, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you call that prayer counselor? That number's at the bottom of the screen. Let us know what God's doing in your life. Call that prayer counselor and, and let that counselor just say, hey, I believe this is what God's doing. Call us. Let us know what God is doing in your life or what you're believing God for. We'll be on your cheering squad. We'll be on your team. We'll be there rooting for you and God to make it through this situation. Well, this is Pastor Jerry Abel saying thank you for being a part of Victory Today. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abel. Thanks for watching Victory Today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today. We're excited to introduce the all-new Victory Church app, now available on the Apple App Store and the Android market for your smartphone and tablet. Get church information and download free content from Victory. Don't miss a service. Listen to past week's messages on the go, new after each service in the Camden and El Dorado campuses. Access Victory TV on demand and watch all the exciting video series taught by Pastor Jerry and the Victory Pastoral Team. Send a confidential prayer request and let the Victory Prayer Ministers believe God with you for your your miracle and take advantage of our most convenient way to give with a secure victory giving section where you can choose from many easy ways to give your tithes or sow into specific ministries of the church at your convenience right from the palm of your hand it's all at your fingertips on the new victory church app download for free today simply go to the apple app store or the android marketplace right on your smartphone or tablet and search for the victory church arkansas and click on the victory logo